What is a research gap? Let's talk about it. So I'm sure you've all realized that I'm not in South Africa. I am teaching in the beautiful Salzburg here in Austria. And the mountain behind us is the Untersberg mountain, which is on the outskirts of the city of Salzburg. If you look just slightly left, you'll see the Alps. Absolutely beautiful. You might be starting your research and your professor tells you, you have got to identify a research gap. But what is a research gap? A research gap is a problem that has not been addressed or answered in previous research. So what it means is there is inadequate or missing or incomplete information about some sort of problem that continues to be a problem. And these problems you would typically find in the real life or real world scenario. And the real world or in the academic setting. But when you start your research, you have to identify a gap. Because if there's no gap, there's no research. Yeah, like a gap. I've mentioned this in a previous video up here somewhere. Research does not always solve the problem. What it does many times is it sheds light on the problem. Can you shed some light on the situation? When you do research, particularly at a master's and PhD level, it is expected that you fill some type of research gap. But how do you identify this gap? What can you do to establish whether or not there is in fact a gap? I'm gonna give you a few pointers that'll help you. These pointers I use often, because as academics, our job, my job, is to conduct research that addresses these research problems and therefore the gaps. So here are the five things you can do to identify a research gap, and specifically for a master's or PhD thesis. The first important thing to do when identifying a research gap is to figure out if something is bothering you maybe in your workplace or you've tried to find out something about a topic that you are interested in but you just can't find any information or in the context of your work there is just no solution so what it means is there is something that's tickling you yes tickling there's something that's missing there's something that needs more investigation very often that something is a problem that needs further investigation that could evolve into a suitable research gap for your thesis so if you are busy with research what i would suggest is jot down a few things that bother you in the specific topic or discipline that you intend doing your research project on you should jot that down now you might identify quite a few problems. The challenge is to find one that is worthy of doing further research on, that is worthy of doing a master's or a PhD on. And that is not always as simple. This leads us to the second thing you can do. And that is to read as much as you can. Read, 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 don't stop reading. Read. Read in the broader discipline read in sub-disciplines, you have to establish whether or not somebody has done research on this topic. You might in fact find that there is a solution. You might in fact find that the gap has been filled. So why would you then be interested in doing this research if somebody else has filled the gap? And this only comes from reading. Read as much as you can, read as often as you can, and keep record of what you are reading. Identify themes that might play into the bigger research problem and create some form of filing system or database where you record and can easily draw up these themes or topics. A third thing you can do is to 
Speak to your supervisor. Speak to me, dummy. Speak. Now, of course, your supervisor should be a specialist in the broader topic that you have selected. But that doesn't mean that he or she is necessarily well versed on the specific topic that you are busy with. And by definition, they shouldn't be. Because by definition, if there is a gap, your supervisor has not filled that gap. Because no one has filled that gap. Uh -huh. But he or she is a great reference point that at the very least will encourage you to ask the right questions. So don't neglect the relationship with your supervisor whilst you are trying to identify the gap. Many times you might be onto something. All you need is a little guidance to refine your argument. The fourth thing that you can do is don't only read, attend conferences if possible and look at the calls in different journals, especially the top end journals and see the topics that they are focusing on. So while you are reading, make sure that you are looking at the topics in top journals, in top conferences, in the proceedings of conferences to try and get an assessment of whether the topics are worth being studied. If needs be, make appointment with prominent people in the topic, whether that be in industry or in academia. Try and be as bold as you can and don't limit the resources that you are using. Finally, and for me the most important thing, is that you must enjoy the topic that you have selected. You're not going to find a problem if you don't enjoy reading, if you don't enjoy investigating. There must be something in you that drives your desire to do research on this topic. Make notes. Create some sort of filing system for the resources that you are using. Don't just read and forget about it. Record it somehow. Maybe you could write a paragraph that summarizes each article that you've read. But it's important that you document what you are reading. Because what you will find as you are busy writing your thesis, that many of the topics you initially thought were not part of it, are in fact part of it. And your brain is a wonderful thing. The ability to remember or tap into what you have read in the past is phenomenal. I've had many cases where I would have read something years ago and then I'm sitting at a conference somewhere and somehow your brain just remembers a paper that you read that you thought wasn't relevant. So the reading phase is extremely important, but do not limit it only to reading. Find other avenues of getting more information and more understanding of the topic at hand so that you can identify the problem and articulate the research gap in such a way that when your supervisor or the PhD panel assesses it, they are in fact convinced that this warrants further investigation. On that note, if you will excuse me, I'm going to be enjoying this beautiful view a little bit longer.